Lesbia family. Welcome back. Well, I have finished this bunk bed in the style I want for the cottage. So here is the, if, the after. What do you think? I think it de definitely looks very woody. So anyway, I have to make some bedding for it. And I thought, why not take this opportunity to make, oh, and this um, bleh, bed for Kirsty. It's going to be Batsy. This is going to be Izzy. So I thought, why not take this opportunity to do a small tutorial on mattresses that I've made. And while I'm at it, I'll just do a simple pillow, mattress, and blanket thing to show you what I'm doing and go along the way. Yep, good old hashtag as is. I can't even speak today. So I have, I wanted very different color, not actually to each character, but I think I found a good mix. These are the things I've done in all of the big dollhouse. Um, one is I have an old pillowcase that I got from the secondhand store and it has no purpose to me but I thought I can cut that up and get all the wonderful bright colors that will match all three dolls and be colorful. I did buy this at Michael's I believe. Just a piece of fabric, this polka dotted will add into it. I have some yarn here that I've had around. I was going to use it for something else, but I might be able to incorporate that. And I'm definitely going to crochet. I'm not going to show you how to do that, but I am definitely, the colors are good, crochet a little blanket for each area to have folded at the bottom, as you would see, in a cottage. And I always have my banting, quilting banting. This whole bag probably costs about $3.99. As you can see, that's all I've used so far in my project. It goes a long way. Hope you enjoy this tutorial and get something awesome with it. All right, since we're going to make a blanket, a mattress, and a comforter, two-sided, I'm going to start from the beginning. Quick shout out to Brooke Long, who was first on my Barbie doll collection video. Thank you. Glad you finally got it. Um, I'm going to start with a pillow, and although everybody might know how to do this, maybe some don't know how to do it. And when I show you how to make the most awesome pillow, then it will coincide with the rest. So that's why I'm going to be very particular. We've all heard, and these materials are awesome because they're so varied, it'll be easy. You take out the good side and you got the bad side. So the very basics of making a pillow is putting the two good sides together like they're kissing. And then you got your bad side or wrong side inside out. Outside, in, no, inside, I don't know what's that. Anyway, you do that, and of course you pin it, and you're going to sew it. Okay, it's an Issy cover for that pen. Yes. And what I do is, I always get my thing out and do some measuring to make sure. So I have, of course, this. I've held it up to there. I've made two marks how wide I want it. And I made another mark how high I want it, I guess. And... I'm doing that in this in particular because we're doing three sets. So I want them to all kind of coincide and look the same. Otherwise, if I was doing one, I wouldn't worry about that so much. So I got my marks. So the next step would have been sewing. I've already got this ready. So here it is sewn. You can see the orange. This made it easy. You got your orange. And then you leave a little hole opening, of course, so you can turn it inside out. Who's this for? Take it, whichever. They're all three going to be the same. Take it inside out, and then I'm going to need my scissors here. Oh. Now I've cut all that excess. I have all that excess, so I'm going to just cut that off. Snip. Just a little extra. Snip. Snip. Or cut just a little extra off. Now here's a little trick for any pillows you might make sewing. Cut just a little triangle or diagonal here. Will that help a little so, bit? Yes, it helps a lot when you get your corners. It makes it look, it makes it come out really nice. So here's two sides. Now time to get the marker In a pillow out. it doesn't matter if you have extra. And I am going to turn that inside out. And that's done inside out. And now those little diagonals we did, take a pen you can stick it in there and you'll get a much nicer corner. Now, like I said, these are going to help with what we do later. And that's why I'm pointing them out on this nice small thing. 
Gracie's trying to jump ahead of me. I was doing a comparison. And now we have it. Now I can work on that a little more and make it good and then I rush to get it out. And of course you stuff that. I suggest not to all the paper like some people say, if you work this hard to sew and make it, if it got wet, you're gonna end up with a mushy sack of mushy mushy toilet paper. So at the very least try cotton balls. But if toilet paper is all you got, well that's all you got. So of course we pinch that together and then we sew. That leaves me with this one. It's very nice. If you want to go the extra step, you can iron it and that will be make it really, really nice and neat. I will oh. stuff all three of those now, sew them and get them ready. Well, I think they look cute. Definitely a contrast from the wood to the polka dots. I have my pins on there because of course I'm going to sew that, be it by hand or machine. I'm not sure my little holes need to be. So next, let's move on to the blanket and you'll understand why I showed you the pillow. The easy thing. Because I'm going to show you something else that's easy. So I know I need this size for my area for a blanket. So I just put it on top and got about an inch around. Of course, I've pre readied some of this. And then I took my trusty old ruler. I measured this, added it approximately an inch and a half and the end. And you can see I came up with measurements. And I have all my markings so I don't mess it up. I've been particular about, in this case, the material I'm using. I want to get as least of the orange and more of the color as possible. That will make sense later. Um, so, why did I show you this? Because this blanket, usually people use one piece of fabric and they hem it over like that all the way around. If they even do that, or one time, two times to be the right way so it doesn't fray. And then they just make that a blanket and they got one side and one side only. This is how you do two sides. Remember your pillow and how we did it? You just do the same thing. Put two together, kissing each other, make your marks, and just leave a little hole to turn it inside out. There's one thing I suggest when doing this blanket, especially because I have white, is ironing. So after, if you've done your ironing, because this is white and it's going to show through, I do want those lines to be perfect underneath if they show. And here I've done my sewing. So this piece is sewn. Looks good, got that orange. Here's my hole. I've done it at the bottom where it's not going to show. And of course, I've done my little snip, just like the pillow. I'm going to cut my excess. Do my, uh, I guess I said that ironing a little too early. Now it would be the time to iron them back. Whoops. Hashtag as is. There I go. So I will iron these this way to make them nice. When you turn it inside out, just like you did the pillow, you have, see how they show up with the white? So that's why I was really particular about the iron. Um, you don't have to be that way. Now we can look and see, we got a gorgeous little blanket. And it should fit on here quite lovely. Look at that, look at that. Of course we made enough to do a fold over. And that's what's been fun about this particular fabric and why I want to enjoy it because it will all be matching but different. But it can be switched around, be in two ways. I now got three looks or I could flip it around if I'm bored and in the mood to redecorate. Oops. And I could flip it this way and have more orange. Or I could flip it that way and have more green. So it definitely these colors are a matter of of personal preference and fun, but in this case of the cottage, perfecto. What do we need next? You can leave this, you can put a piece of felt on that to have a mattress. I have another idea, which is one I use in the dollhouse quite a bit, and it coincides with what we've done. Doesn't that look cute? I love it. If you wanted to stay stuck on a style, you could iron these down and that would lay flatter and be a little bit more tighter and cleaner looking. And now we have another piece for our mattress. 
mattresses for dolls don't need to be soft, but I like the effect of fluffy and soft because when they lay on it, it just looks more realistic and that's just my own groove. And if you're going to do it on the floor like I did in some, such as Rochelle's room, um, the boys' five bunk beds, just had to add something. So this looks like the same thing, right? Just what I did before. I stuck that on top, my sizing, did about an inch all the way around. The same as the blanket, although now I didn't make the inch and a half hanging over the sides. Now I just did it perfectly measured to what I want it to land on, the mattress. And now I'm ready to sew. And you're gonna just do one or two different steps from that. What we're gonna do is, we got our two sides kissing. We got our foam. Okay, so now you see that this is just a titch different. These are still our sides kissing. This is on the inside. Of course, you can't sew on that. What you do, and I've specifically used a very different color to show you the difference. You put that on top. Now, I did screw up. Those markings should be on the other side. Let me do that so you can see those. Put my thing, my padding, and then put just extra, doesn't have to be anything as long as it sews nice. And then of course, all we're gonna do is sew it. I'm gonna pin this all around just like we did the pillow, just like we did the blanket. And then you're gonna, and leave a hole of course. And when you pin, the reason I made these lines and switched it over so I can see it, what you're trying to do is make your sew line land on your banting. I did it small because I'm used to it. That's just what I do. Easier to make sure that happens would be just cutting a big piece of bigger piece of banting. So let's get to the sewing part. So you're gonna come up with something like this. You can hardly see the orange on that, but you can see it here. Oh, and of course, I'm gonna cut my excess and I'm gonna cut my little diagonals in each corner too. Oops, sorry about that. And I got my hole. So the only thing that adds to the difference is how you open it. You want to make sure you open your two kissing spots. If you open it here, that's going to come out. Or open it, make it inside out, that's going to show. So the only difference is make sure you open it and turn it inside out like that. We are on our way to a mattress. Voila! I turned it inside out, just like we would do a pillow, made sure I opened it the right way. This can give you an idea of what's happening in there. See the thing is blocking the, the stuff, the banting. So the banting's under there and out of the way, and I was able to sew it, do it inside out, and now we have a beautiful little mattress that's also a blanket, that's also a pillow. If you can make a pillow, you can do this. Of course, I'm gonna sew that up because I know it's gonna be in the back. That's why I decided to do that instead of the ends or the front. Now you can leave it like this, or you can quilt as I did with the boys' rooms and some other rooms, which I will show you later. For examples, you can just go on your sewing machine. Any of this stuff can be done by hand, by the way. It would just take a long time. And you can quilt. You could just sew lines this way, that way, across. That can change your design up from a simple design, change it up amazing amounts of different ways. I think I'm gonna go like this, just like I did in another room. Who knows, I might change my mind. But anyway, I will show you all that in just a little bit. And let's see if it fits. Oh, look at that. How cute is that? And of course, I didn't go too much to side because who changes the mattresses, but you can. And We'll put the little blanket on top. And there we have a basic pillow that can make you all that. Just for fun, I've been working on the little crochet blankets that will go down here too. This will be Kirsty's in my case. Cute. Now when I go down here, this isn't gonna fit if you've done this particular bunk bed from my tutorial. You will see that this is not going to fit as well. So I'm gonna have to custom fit that and make it obviously a little bit smaller 
so it fits in just a little bit better. So did you understand how I did that with the two kissing and then the third? Well, try to keep that in mind. Think opposite in that way. And then I have another little, we'll go back to the pillows. Now that you know how to do that, you can understand how I'm gonna do these pillows. So I'm thinking opposite and I'm just putting for each of the three dolls something personal in their own little throw pillow and I've put ribbon. So if you can understand that in there, see it with the lines? So when I sew and then I flip that inside out, from inside out, it's going to have a little design on it which I can put the little monogrammed letter on. You see? So just look inside out. I hope that helps and it's going to look gorgeous when we show. Very, very gorgeous when we show how it looks all together. So they'll have this pillow and a little throw pillow with their monogram. Um, now, I like to sew, of course, and I like to highly recommend my friend on another YouTube channel, got a Dolls, Toys, and Games gal. I have her on my Mama's Faves channel list. She doesn't like to sew, and that's okay too. And she does phenomenal beds and comforters and all kinds of pillows monogrammed just beyond extremely out there and fun and creative and gorgeous um she have a look at her she does hers all with glue gun although i do sewing if you can't do sewing i really do suggest you have a look at her work and get some great tips she's got a fascinating way of doing the pillows i can't explain it because i only know how to sew and i don't do it with glue gun but she goes like that I don't know. Go check, go, check, go check her out and see her stuff. You'll enjoy her beds and her doll reviews of Monster High and Ever After. So let me get on to making the rest of this stuff. This three beds. Here is how I decided to quilt because once I did up here, I just thought it looked better with less. And also, I did the top one regular, you know, and this one I just didn't like the idea of it skinnier. So I custom fit it on the edges to fit in there perfectly. That was all done on the inside. I will show you a picture so you can see how to make those notches if your bedposts are in the way. And here we are, da 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 da, the reveal. All done. Super, super happy with it. There's those little pillows I told you about. I did do an ironed line here to keep it nice and neat and fitting good. Now, as you can see, it's very simple. So that's why I wanted everything pretty exact because they don't have a lot of stuff going on like in the big dollhouse. Here's Kirsty's blow up mattress. And we have her and Afghan there. I'm presently working on Issy's. And then what few things they will get will match, like Batsy's pillow will match that, and just a few little doodads. Let's do a shout out to Tumblr Jack, Mr. Chris, who got first on the poster making how-to tutorial video. And I think it's nice to note that between even including the bed, which was under $10, the only thing I bought was this and this. So all of these beds were done at a cost of approximately... Sixteen, seventeen dollars, twenty tops. So that's pretty economical. Stay tuned, you SBF family junkies, as afterwards, because I am going to show some examples of how to use the same thing and what we've already done. If not, take care. We'll see you next time. Thanks for all your support and all your watching and all your wonderful comments. I enjoy reading, reading and commenting and replying to every single one. Have a great night. Take care. Okay, gonna take a minute. Here we are in our huge 40 room Monster Eye dollhouse. The regs know about it, but if you're new to learning how to do this or new to learning about us, anyway, we're gonna get in here and we're gonna give you some examples of how I've used the same techniques to do a whole bunch of different bets. Pillows, have fun with them, two-sided splatter with a toothbrush. I have that technique in my faux painting. Very simple. That made blood. Use that in here. Now we see. 
same thing. Two cups. It's just as basic. It was put together the whole from there. I used a red and a plaid. Then we got Rochelle's. Rochelle's was grays with their pillow. As you can see, I matched the quilting and I did it all and then quilted on top on the outside. A little stamp from scrapbooking. She has only one side to her bed and then she has the two sides to her comforter. And we have Operetta, many different pillows. That's puffy paint on top of the pillow for decorations. Closing them up with contrasting colors to match. It was the Operetta costume. Yeah. Um, this one too, a little puffy paint for a little extra design. Silks and satins. Fake, of course. Two-sided blanket. This is a kind of a suede and then a black. Sorry about the dog hair. This one I used the contrasting colors to match to show off on purpose. Or I guess it was going to show off one way or the other. Then we went into Rebecca's area here. Got a little more creative here. I did actually use a little bit of glue gun to start those and then wrapped it around and made it stick wherever so it had that metal robot feeling. She has two colors, of course. And that winding stuff goes around. Her mattress is just a piece of crochet because I like the color it matched that particular doll. Then we got Gilded Goads, Gold Stay, who is a deer, right? And, and uh, spirit deer. No, that's a sea deer. So it's, yeah, she's a deer. And anyway, I'm getting lost. Um, this fabric was a fake leather. And so I did, I did glue gun on the outside of the pillow after it was done. And then I made the blanket. This one I only did one-sided because this is a stretchy fabric and I was afraid and I didn't have anything contrasting to put on the other side on hand if I used two fabrics that could end up kinking and being a mess. That one is sewed on. This is that fake leather again. Hand sewn That's closed. Soft. This has no quilting in it as some of these don't. It's optional as long as I told you in that technique, you catch it on the side, you're okay. Well, the venting won't move. This was already here in the design. That wasn't me. Then we have Manny Tour. I used the same thing, but I sewed his on the outside. And there's a secret on the other side. <laughs> yeah, and his is extra long. So we, of course, your measuring is very important to make it fit. And then for his quilting, I just put three little half-inch sew marks in it to hold it together. And then his other side has what was... Um, lens cleaning fabric, so you can use whatever. I just like the draft. Plus it did look like um, fitness rugs. Yeah. And then we have a little variation, which is the boys' rooms. Now we have the twins, Holt and um, Jackson. 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 Uh, a double bed, so you can make a double size measure. You can get whatever you want by how I showed you. And then these ones I quilted on the outside again, but I did a full square instead of coming off. I went there. Now, here's where I did, let's get a visual on the size we were working on. Remember when we did the hole so you can turn it inside out? Well, I didn't just sew that hole in. I added this extra piece in there. So when I sold the, sewed the hole, I did that. This is just a, three, a blanket itself, done inside out, and then put into there. And that makes a cover. It's in Abby's, and it is... A sleeping bag because she lives in the Arctic <laughs> and we don't use it because it covers her up but remember we did the inside and out um, on the the mattresses and this also used to be my Abby with the foam instead of using the foam or not the foam the banting I just used a secondary fabric the first kissing one being something that was see-through and the second being one that was a pattern so it would show through did the same effect. It all mattered on how you did it. Now instead of the hole being closed up, just sewed it a little bit open. And because then we roll we it. Open. And you have yourself a sleeping bag. As well in here in Cleo's, we did a beautiful double-sided blanket. The bed was already made. I just did a double-sided blanket pillow. And then we have some more to show you in. There's a blanket we made for Elizabeth. Just put a little cute design on the end of hers and then genifiers use the same thing to use as make as the futon we did not want to pull all these out 
Yeah, but it's nice to see them inside too. So we hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you've hung out for this long to see this all, you're amazing. I hope you have come away with this with lots of new knowledge and ideas galore. Have a great night. Don't forget, we're Super Buddies Forever.